Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, what's up? Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos every week. So today I just wanted to talk about some of the downfalls to being a nail tech. Yes, there are many pluses, there's some minuses, there's huge benefits, and I wouldn't trade anything else in the world. I would not go back in time and change anything, but I did want to reach out just to talk about some of the downfalls that you may encounter in your career as a nail technician. I've been in this industry for more than 20 years and there are a lot of things mentally, physically, emotionally, socially that have taken a toll on myself. So I wanted to hope that this video can maybe help prepare some of you, some of the things that I went through, hopefully you can avoid by taking some preventative measures. And then at the end of the video, let's talk about some ways that we can help possibly overcome these issues. So again, you don't face what I did in my career. And by any means, I just wanna note that this video is not to discourage any of you from being a nail tech. Like I said, it is a beautiful career path if that is your chosen career in life or your hobby that you're interested in. So I just wanna point that out that this video is not to discourage anybody from being a nail tech. Let's get into it right now. So there are some general issues that you will encounter or you might have already encountered. Even if you are a beginner nail tech, you'll start to see some of these general changes affect you. And one of those things would be socially. So as a nail technician, you know, we work late nights, we work weekends, we work holidays. Scheduling could be an issue. And these are some of the things that you will have to sacrifice. You know, when most of the world has off certain days, holidays, we don't have those days off. If we wanted to take a weekend off or have a night out, we have to schedule ourselves to be off. So we don't get paid. We can't just clock out early and, or use sick time and such. So those are the things that kind of take a toll when you make a choice between, okay, do I need to hang out on Saturday or do I need to work? So those things can play a part, especially for those of you that are young. I know in my 20s, there was many things that I wanted to do and I'm like, but I gotta work and I don't get out too late and you can never really say how late you're gonna be out or how late you're gonna be working because that one glass client, it's always the last one, that you think is gonna be super quick, they decide today's the day that they wanna do everything and now you're shutting down the shop at 11 p.m. It happens. I've closed many shops after midnight. It is what it is. So these is, that's something that definitely will take a toll on you socially, If especially as you're younger. If you're older, you might not mind so much, but when you're younger, it can be a little tricky. Also, as I stated, you have holidays, you have sick days. This is not a normal nine to five job unless you work as an tech in a shop. That is the benefit of working in maybe more of an upscale salon or spa when you have paid time off, paid holidays and paid sick time. And as a nail tech, we don't have that. So, I mean, when you're sick, you, you're sick, you got to call out, but it sucks because you don't work, you don't make money. That's the end of it. So to having those holidays, Thanksgiving is actually a really, really big day in the shop. We were always busy. I can't even tell you how many Thanksgivings I just rolled in in time enough just for dinner. New Year's Eve, I, please, I walked in the house, like literally as the ball was dropping because I was in the shop from 8 a.m. to 12 midnight and stuff. So those are things that you, I mean, you can choose to not sacrifice, but I mean, if you're hungry, you want it, you work in a shop, you know, sometimes you work for someone and you gotta do what they say. So it's up to you, but I chose to stay and work because I needed to, that's what I had to do at the moment. So those are some of the things that over the years, it does take a toll on you. Also too, one of the things that I miss, and I say this to my customers a lot, I miss that feeling of going to the nail salon. I don't know how many nail techs have you actually go get your nails done, but I haven't stepped foot. I've been doing my own nails since I was 16 years old. I haven't stepped foot and had anybody touch my hands since then. Maybe three times I asked a coworker, and then honestly, I went home and fixed it myself because I didn't like it. But I miss that. I don't get that. A lot of women and a lot of your customers come to you and say, I come here because I want to relax. This is my me time. Yes, I can go get a pedicure. I've tried that. Honestly, it's not really, it's slim pickings out there. It's not a lot of good pampering salons and spas that aren't charging you a whole arm and a leg to just get a pedicure. But I miss that. I miss having that pampering moment. There's other services you can get, but sometimes you just like to have like your nails and your feet done. That's your me time. So that's one of the things that I think any 
technician, lash tech. Well, lash techs get their lashes on my other lashes. But hairdressers, sometimes they'll go to other hairdressers. If you're somebody that just is a tech and you do it yourself, you, you miss out on that those pampering moments. I miss going to the salon with my friends, uh, with a girlfriend, and we go get our stuff done. So those are things that don't really happen. So another main huge downfall to being a nail tech, which I want you to just be mindful of now as you start your career, or if you've been doing nails a while and you're watching this, but you haven't experienced anything, start taking some preventative measures is physical issues that you will come across. So the main thing is, you know, as nail techs, we sit all day. This is extremely bad and terrible for our back. We are hunched over all day and it can take a toll on your back, your shoulders, your neck over time. I will tell you there will be issues over time if you don't kind of take some measures to kind of help your situation out throughout the work days. So one would be like your wrist pain. I'm sure many of you have had several wrist pains and you know it, it's sore, it's cracked if you worked a long time or we all know when we have that person that's really stiff, uh, they don't get that, that hurts our hand like crazy and it's a sharp shooting pain that runs down your forearm. Leave me a comment below if that happens to you and you hate that too. So we have a lot of wrist pains. We have hand and finger pain. Sometimes I'll, my dominant hand, I will get cramps. I crack my knuckles a lot, but you get cramps and stuff from holding a drill, from being so steady with it, from holding a nail file, from holding your fingers in certain position as you're polishing and as you're doing your acrylic application. Those are things that it might start to cramp up on you. Also, you might experience some dry patches on your skin, especially in your elbow area. So if you don't know, it's a bad habit that we have as nail techs is to leave one of our elbows on the table. You just wanna be very mindful when you have your towel out and you're putting your elbow on to the table and your table, even if it's not wet, it still was saturated with some monomer or acetone, which can actually lead to some type of skin issues. You might have some dry patches, rough elbows. So you wanna be mindful of where your towel is and where your elbow situation is if you don't have armrests on your chair. So that's something that you might wanna encounter. You might have dry hands. We are covered in dust all day so we always have dry skin i mean we can lotion we can moisturize but as much as we wash our hands they get dusty immediately right after so it's hard to retain some type of moisture especially in your hands another huge thing and this was a big one for me personally was nostrils sinus issues i have very very dry nose this is my own fault this is why i make these videos to help you guys out i was that technician that never wore a mask i didn't like masks i don't like i still didn't like masks COVID is actually what got me saying, wow, this actually does help with dust. But for the 20 years that I was doing nails, except the time when I was pregnant, I never wore a mask. So because of that, I have a lot of chemicals going in my nose. I have a lot of dust and debris going in my nose, unaware of, and my nose gets extremely dry. Don't even get me started about the winter time. So that it was a huge issue for me having a dry nose. Like I said, over the last couple of years, it got extremely better, especially when wearing a mask now with COVID and everything. But that's something that you just wanna be mindful of always having your mask on. Back and neck pains. This is something that, again, we sit in the same position all day. So you have shoulder pain. This is your filing hand, your dominant hand, your arm. All of these things, they tend to get a little sore, especially if you work, work, work. If you're a tech that works five, six days a week and you're working, eight to 10 hours a day, it's overwhelming. So you wanna be mindful of how you're positioning yourself, sitting up forward, taking a minute to stretch and just trying to not cramp up that dominant arm or hand, like I said, your wrists, your fingers, everything, because we're doing this all day. This is why a lot of the times I stress to you that you always wanna make sure that you are comfortable. Your client, yes, they're there, they need to be comfortable as well, but you're doing this a lot longer and you need to be comfortable and your health and your safety is definitely priority as well. So another thing that you may not think would be an issue, but it can be very mentally draining to be an L technician. You are talking all day long. If you're that technician, I am that technician. I have relationships with all my customers. We converse, we talk, we chat. It's conversation after conversation. It's, hey, what's going on in your life? It's me repeating the same stories. I mean, if I see you every three weeks, so I'm going three weeks worth of stories and then adding this what happened. I mean, 
I'm that nail technician that, like I said, I have relationship, I have friendship with my customers. So we speak, we get down to it. And it can be mentally draining sometimes to just talk all day, to be on all day. And side note, I had a customer last week and this is just an example. And she came in and I was, I think I had like itis, I'm not gonna lie to you, I just finished eating. And I was like tired. She was like my last person of the day. And Miss Thing came in and she was on it. Hey, how are you? It was her first time. And she's like, like, how long have you been doing this? And you know, sometimes people will talk just in the beginning and then it will die down. She wanted to talk the whole time. So in my head, I was like, all right, I gotta like, like wake up, get into it because I gotta give her this energy back. She's giving me all this energy. I gotta give it back to her. And as tired as I was, and as much as I didn't feel like talking, I had to sit there and talk. So it can be very mentally draining every day. Sometimes you just, you, you know, you gotta put on a face, put on a smile, converse, be friendly with your customers. You know, you can't let them come in and see you like down and depressed and you don't feel like talking and you're bored. And that's not very fun for them. We wanna make these memorable moments for our customers. So mentally draining is a thing. And leave me a comment below if sometimes when you're done with work, I know this was me, when you go home, your family and friends don't understand that you don't feel like talking. You just want to, you appreciate silence. Like, I don't want to talk. It's nothing against you to your boyfriend, husband, friends, whoever you live with. <laughs> you're like, it's nothing against you, but I just want to not talk for a minute. The same thing with sitting. Sometimes after work, I'm like, I don't even want to sit down on the bus. I just want to stand and I want to be silent because this is what I've been doing all day, sitting and talking. So I just want to stand and be silent. So leave me a comment below if that's just me thing or if that happens to you as well. So some ways that we can avoid these issues. Like I said in the beginning of this video, these are things that I have had issues with over the years and I just wanted to express to some of you, which I'm sure you can relate to, if not most of these something on this list of things that I've been speaking about. So how can we avoid these things? How do we take preventative measures so that we don't have cramps in our arms and we don't have this and have that. So first of all, you want to make sure that you are sitting in an ergonomically correct chair. So that means that usually it has some type of arch or curve in the back. It's supporting your lumbar, which is like your lower back area. We want to make sure that we are supported all the time as we're sitting. You want, if you're not in your chair, you can also go Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description box below about a pillow that you can get that I purchased that kind of supports that area for you. So you wanna make sure that you have a comfortable chair. Again, you're in this chair all day. We wanna make sure we're positioned. So a lot of times techs think, I have to get a chair that has cushion. But remember, we sit as a nail tech. We never sit back. We're not sitting back and doing nails. We sit forward. So it's that lower back that you wanna support. It's who cares about this? This is gonna be hunched over. You're gonna be this way. You're gonna be leaning forward. So we wanna make sure that we're positioned correctly. Also, you can buy certain implements. Make sure that your implements are comfortable in your hand. If they're too small or too big, you're actually straining your hand trying to cut. You can also mess somebody up. But you wanna make sure that your nippers and everything is ergonomically correct. We sell, they do sell nippers and such that are, the handles are a certain way so that it's more support on your fingers and for your wrist as you're working. So you might wanna look into that if you're somebody that does a lot of manicures or pedicures and you're holding implements all the time, especially your nippers and clippers. So another thing is you wanna make sure to pay attention, close attention to how you are positioned throughout the day. So again, sometimes we tend to lean to, lean to the side, sometimes we tend to do this. We wanna make sure we're straight. The first thing I always do is I sit at my table, I make sure that my client is directly in front of me. If they're off to the side or they have one hand like that, that doesn't work. We need to be positioned directly across from each other so that I am not leaning more towards one side than she is at the other. I need to make sure that my back is in a good position is up, the lower back is supported. I'm not slunched over, hunch, is it hunch, slunch? I'm not hunched over and she's sitting there all comfortable. Again, they sit for very little. You have to be comfortable. Make them extend their arms, make them hold their hand up a little bit. You can buy pillows, and armrest for the customer so they could be higher. If you feel that you're starting to feel that pain in your shoulders and your, your um, neck. So we wanna make sure we're not sitting like this all day, but we're more forward. You wanna move in with your back 
and not slouched over. Make sure your lighting is good so you're not scrunched over trying to see what you want to see. That's another thing. Your eye strain. Your eyes will go with age. I'm going to tell you right now. I don't see how I used to see 10 years ago. But you want to make sure your light is good as well. Something else that you can do is get into some finger and hand exercises. They do sell little balls that you can kind of help with the strain. As I do this right now, I feel strain in these three fingers. So, you know, you want to make sure you're doing some exercises. You're stopping, you're rotating your wrist every once in a while. Sometimes I'll shake it out, shake my hands out, shake my wrist, get my elbows going. We want to make sure we're moving these muscles because they can tend to get stiffened and then they'll cramp and then they hurt. And that's where we have a problem. So take a minute, even if it's one second while your customer is doing something, you see exactly what I'm doing right now. Just stretching your wrist out a little bit, kind of just like giving yourself a little mini massage, work it a little bit. We want to make sure we don't tighten up these muscles because these are the money makers. We can't let anything happen to these hands. Something else too is, believe it or not, getting a professional mm -hmm. massage. Yes, it's an expense, but it's something that again, will help preventatively for your back pain. If you are getting a massage regularly. And I say, I mean, if you could do it twice a year, great. If you can do it more, fantastic. So you want to have a professional massage because as much as we're stretching and standing and doing this and that, sometimes we you will get knots in your back, especially like right over here. And then I know I get something on this. I lean on this arm more so I get like knots right here. You have to have a professional work that out. Uh, you can also purchase a pillow. I'll leave some links in the description box below about some of the things that I use. I do have a back pillow that it has heat, but it has two balls that actually knead into your back. So sometimes after a long day or a long week, I will bust that pillow out and I'll have it work my back. But there's nothing like getting a professional massage that is going to help long term the benefits of your back. If you find yourself overworked and you find that I'm doing wrist ex exercises, I'm doing finger exercises, it's just been a crazy busy week and I'm in pain, what I would do and what I still do is if I have those moments, I actually wrap my hand with an ace bandage. What I do is I put my ace bandage on, I'll wrap it around and I'll wrap it till about here and it keeps my hand stiff and it helps with my wrist. So whatever wrist is bothering you, it's usually my non-dominant one because people are stiff and this is the hand I think it's but wrapping your hand with an ace bandage. So obviously you can't use an ace bandage while you're working because it will get dusty. We're washing our hands, you're doing pedicures and water and stuff. So when my day is over, I'll wrap my hand in an ace bandage. I'll sleep like that and I'll take it off right before the first person. So that's a little quick remedy if you're having wrist or hand issues and you can just wrap that with an ace bandage. So the moral of today's story is pay attention to how you are sitting get chairs and pillows and take good care of yourself when you are working and being a nail tech. This is a big downfall that we have. Take some mental breaks. Take a day off. Give yourself one day off. I know it's hard, especially to those other mommies out there. We have no days off. But even if dealing with your child is the only thing you have to do that day, let that be the only thing you have to do that day. It's very important to take time off because like I said, mentally and emotionally, it can be draining as well. I always try to schedule one day. I'll, I'll try to jam pack two days so that I can have that third day to myself. If you can't afford it, if you have the time, try to take some time off, clear your mind, especially from social media, from clients texting you and DMing you, shut it down. Give yourself moments or at least part of a day to kind of unwind. Don't overwork your body. I'm telling you, especially you young nail techs out there, you guys in your early 20s, I was there, you're ripping, you're running, you're like it. invincible, nothing can stop you. I don't feel tired, I feel good, I feel good. That's fantastic, you feel good, but you won't always feel good. So you just wanna make sure that you don't overwork yourself. You wanna take good care of yourself. Also, when you're not working, try to moisturize your hands. Again, we get very dry. So you don't wanna end up having long-term skin issues from having very dry skin. So on your days off or when you get home, try to do like a little sugar scrub, make sure you do lotion. I know in the winter, because of this issue in the winter, I do sleep with gloves. I lotion it up and put some aquaphor on my hands, put some gloves on and that's how I sleep. That's how I do in the winter because my hands get extremely dry all summer. Like I said, during the work days, it's very hard to maintain moisture and keep on some actual product. And always, always, 
If you didn't listen to any single thing that I said in this video, wear a mask. Wear a mask, and if you have one, you can get one, and if you don't already have one, get a dust collector. That was probably the biggest mistake that I've made in my whole entire career, is just not wearing a mask because of the long-term damage it's done to my nostrils and breathing and all this stuff. So make sure you're wearing your mask. If you're not doing it for pedicures, that's fine. But while you're doing enhancements, manicures, manicures are okay too. When you're working with enhancements and you're filing a lot, wear a mask. The dust collector does help also. Not only does it keep my dust clean, but it actually takes in majority of that dust. It doesn't get rid of everything, but between that and the mask, like I said, I've noticed drastic changes just in the last couple of years. So if you guys have any other questions, please feel free to leave me a comment below. I'm gonna leave some links in the description box below for you so you can check those items out. They won't be on my website. I'll just leave them in the description box below. And don't forget to hit the thumbs up and like this video. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.